Hi guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and welcome to episode 7 of the YouTube Shop Student where a computer geek like me tries to learn how to use machine tool. And uh, so in the last uh, episode, if you see over here on my shoulder, we uh, had counterboard the front of the faceplate, flipped it on there backwards, faced uh, the, the stub down, um, leaving uh, just a, a little over a quarter inch counter bore, flipped it over and run it back on the spindle and kind of running out of time there. So at this point, I need to take this chuck and uh, I got some measurements off of it and I verified the documentation to come with me and we're, we're driving pretty good. Um, but I have to turn the step down uh, to fit the counter bore on the back of this chuck. So now this is a six inch chuck or at least that's what it was sold as. I bought it from CD uh, Tools our CD Co tools. Um, it's, uh, I'll be honest with you, it's gritty. You know, you can feel that it's gritty and when I get this job done, I'm going to take this apart and, and wash this up real good. And, and if anybody wants to see that, just shoot me a message after the video goes up and, and I'll, I'll show it. Otherwise I'm just going to do it. Um, there are plenty of other folks out there that have, um, uh, you know, taking these uh, three jaw scroll chucks apart. So you'll get a chance to uh, see what it is. So anyway, well, like I said, it was sold as a six inch uh, chuck, but it's actually a metric um, uh, chuck. It's uh, the diameter is uh, 160 millimeters. That's the outside diameter. And it comes to about 6.299 inches as I convert it. Uh, I've measured the internal bore, uh, this diameter here, and this is coming out to 5.118 inches. Um, and that's right at 130 millimeters. And that's what the documentation says. So I'm, uh, I feel pretty comfortable with that. So the, the shoulder here or this, uh, uh, boss here that's on the back plate, we're going to have to turn that down to, um, uh, 5.118 inches or five inches, 118 thousandths, I guess I should say. And the depth on the back here, this varies a little bit because in the back of this chuck, it's kind of weird. It's got, instead of having a, a metal plate back here it's got a, a plastic plate maybe that's a I mean, it can't be good right i don't know um but maybe then again it just doesn't affect it at all we'll see but on average i got about 225 thousandths depth uh here uh so that, that will allow me to turn this down and take a couple little light facing passes here on the outside of this now if you watch my four jaw chuck video you know that that was a. uh, uh I had some uh, time setting the tool or had messed up, you know, setting the tool to make sure I can make the cut and had to readjust and yada, 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 you know the story. So hopefully this time I can uh, get that checked, uh, you know, my tool travel check before I turn the camera on and turn the machine on. Uh, another thing that was pointed out, you know, I am cutting steel here. This is not a cast iron uh, back plate. And uh, somebody said, hey, look, you should uh, probably use some cutting oil. And uh, so, you know, I'd ask the question, uh, to somebody I'm like well okay well what do you use you know can, can you use anything and uh, and what is the difference between cutting oil and um, uh, lubricating oil right and the best I get from it the difference between put, uh, cutting oil and lubricating oil is that lubricating oil has a very high molecular shear factor in other words that uh, it's uh, designed to stick to the metal and uh, the molecules not shear apart, allowing the metal to dig into each other. I mean, that's, that's the lubricating value. Where cutting oil um, doesn't have that uh, high shear, uh, molecular shear uh, pressure to it. It, it actually uh, shears to allow the metal to contact, but it serves more as a cooling and a lubricating surface so that the chip will slide off of the tool. Now, uh, I've also had other people say, hey, look, I just use 20 weight oil. And you know, I really don't know. And uh, But anyway, I did uh, swing out and I bought, a, I bought a thing here of cutting and grinding oil here from Napa. And look, I tell you what, this <laughs> I live in Podunk, right? And, uh, and Podunk, um, first of all, machine tools and stuff like that, you just can't find them, right? I mean, nobody out here does that stuff. People here farm and, and do stuff like that. But I mean, you just don't, you know, the people here just don't. Uh, so I found one lonely bottle of cutting oil sitting on the shelf and it was sucked in like some dehydrated camel. Man, its sides were all squished in. But anyway, uh, this is a Napa uh, 765-1526 uh, soluble cutting oil. You can dilute this with water, but I think I'm just going to use it straight for a little bit of turning here that I'm going to do. 
So thanks to Jeremy for pointing out this cutting oil. I'm going to try it out and see how it works. So, uh, so the game plan here is uh, I'm going to clean this up, get my tooling set up, get the camera set up, and we're going to start cutting this down to fit this uh, six-inch uh, three-jaw scroll chuck. So I will uh, see you here in just a minute, and thanks for watching. Okay, guys, I'm back, and I've uh, set the set the tool up. Uh, it's about all the travel I got, so I'm glad I don't have a larger uh, uh, plate to turn. Um, all right, so the, I got the uh, um, I got the lathe set in the lowest speed, not in back gears. Um, I'm gonna take light cuts. I'm gonna find my edge, take a real light cut, back off of it, measure it, and go from there. And then uh, we'll start. Okay, that wasn't a continuous cut, so I'm going to take just a little bit more. All right, you can get a measurement on that. And I'm shooting for 5.118. Okay. All right, and I'm at 5.226, so 5.118 minus, well, here, let me figure this out real quick, <clears throat> grab a calculator. Okay. All right, my measurement is 5.226 and a half. So 5.226 and a half. 5.2265. And I'm shooting for 5.118. 5.118. Oops. Okay, so it leaves me 108 thousandths to take off. So, all right. It's a, hang on, my collar's loose. Let me, uh, let me bring you right back. Okay, so I need to take off about 48 thousandths off the, uh, off the uh, radius. Get a little oil on here. Let's see what we get. All right. All right, so that's about 11. All right. We'll take another measurement. Might as well take her slow here, right? Because me being a new guy and all. <clears throat> All right, I'm at uh, 5.192, and I need to be at 118, so I'm going to take another 10 off the radius. All right, so I'm just going to keep measuring and taking little cuts, and then um, when I get down to the last pass or so, I'll bring you right back but we'll see where we're at now okay I'm at 1 175 so I'll uh, continue to make cuts and I'll bring you back okay so I think this is probably my last cut or really close to it we'll uh, make this cut here and do a test fit well I lied we'll measure first Well, I do think that the cutting oil, or at least the oil, makes it uh, a little easier to cut.
Okay, I'm at uh, 5 inches, 119 and a half, more or less. So, I want to, well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll try the uh, chuck on here. I know this is a no-no, but... Alright, let's see what we got. Ah, it, it, it wants to. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to put on my geezer goggles here and see if I can peel down maybe oh just a hair over a thousandths off. I don't know if it actually cut that or not. Let's find out. Yeah, I'm just taking a whisper off there. All right, let's try it again. Oh, yep, and I don't feel any. I don't feel any play. So let me come up here at the same setting and. And uh, I want to be able to face the side off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up until it's just touching the back there real good. Okay. I'm going to lock my carriage. And let's face her off. Unlock the carriage here. Give this a little wipe down. And you know what? That oil, well done pretty good. There's a, it's a nice finish, guys. So, I'm happy with that. All right, let's uh, lay this check up one here. Oh yeah, seats all the way down. All right, so uh, let me uh, clean up a little bit, and uh, we'll get this truck mounted on here and and uh, see what we got. So, be right back. Okay, so now instead of, um, you know, I said I was going to take this off and fit it, but I, I need to break these corners. So let me do that real quick. i change tools. I was talking to my son Michael who plays a little guitar and he uh, got a nice little riff that he likes to play that I think would be a pretty awesome uh, be a pretty awesome uh, little thing to use you know when I need a little music to fill so I'm, I'm kind of trying to talk him into that I think he's gonna do it though he's a good kid so all right so I got my chamfering tool here and let's chamfer this off all right that should be good oh yeah it's better now look guys I'll be honest with you I was gonna take this off and I bumped that edge look at there so I drew a little blood on that and it was my own stupid fault. So you know what? I bet next time I'll uh, I'll think about uh, chamfering those edges before I go handling it. So that was a newbie mistake, dumb. And so uh, if you got any other new guys out there that's uh, learning to do this, uh, don't do that. So anyway, let me get the camera set up and we'll get it mounted on there and see what we got. Okay, so we're back and uh, so I have the uh, back plate off of the uh, spindle and got the chuck over here. So let's do a, a fit up here. See how this goes. So, all right. Sorry if I'm in the way here. All right. So that is a good fit on there. I can't feel any movement at all. So let me get these bolts started. I don't 
don't have it lined up. I can see it now. <coughs> yeah, it's a good fit. <coughs> All right. Two out of three. Three out of three, and I think my arm's in the way. I'm sorry, guys, if it is. I gotta figure out what size this is. Let's see, make sure I'm not in the way here, okay? plate tightened on there. Let's get her back on the lathe here. All right. All right, so the next thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to run the jaws in here and get the jaws below the sur outer surface of the chuck. There we go. And uh, I want to get an indicator back here and see what kind of run out we got. So let me get the indicator all set up and I'll bring the camera back in. Okay, so I've got the test indicator on here and we're going to give this a spin. See what we got. Some little fluctuation there. So it looks like I got, and this is a half tense indicator. Probably not the best in the world, but I'm seeing a thou. I'm seeing a thou, maybe a hair over from my angle. I guess when I look at the video I'll see more. So you know, hey, I don't think that's too bad. I think, uh, I'll tell you what, I think I got a piece of um, half inch drill rod um, that's fairly straight. Let me stick that in there and we'll just get a run out test on that. So, bring you right into that. Okay, I have a piece of, hang on a minute. Okay, I have a piece of half inch drill rod chucked in here. This is about a foot long. So let's spin it and see what we get. So I've got about a thousandth of an inch of run out. You know what guys, for a three jaw chuck, I can live with that. So now the only other thing that I want to uh, do to this chuck and um, if I can figure out how to do it, assuming I have enough travel, let me back out here. So. The, this plate is uh, bigger than the chuck, so I want to actually um, face or surface or turn this uh, edge of this plate down so that's roughly the same diameter as the truck, so chuck, so it's not sticking out. So let me see if I can get the tooling set up, and we'll try it out. Okay, guys. Well, it doesn't matter if I can get the tool there or not. The uh, the um, carriage interferes with the uh, chuck body before I could ever get the back of it cut. So in order to really do that, I'm gonna to have to disassemble the chuck uh, back plate and just cut it separately and just kind of get it close. And I think that's what I'll do, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, bore you guys with that. So um, let me set the camera and let me uh, talk about a few things that I learned here. So get situated and I'll be right back. All right guys, so what did I learn? Um, well, I, I learned that uh, I think the cutting oil 
did give me a better surface finish than you know when I turned down the uh, hub. So I think there was a slight improvement there. It is pretty smoky though. Uh, I didn't realize uh, how smoky it was. But uh, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, this is a, a good fit uh, to this back plate. Uh, I'll have to take the chuck off to finish facing this. Uh, or not facing it, but uh, turning it down uh, so that's closer to the diameter of the chuck. So I won't bother you anymore with uh, uh, chuck back plates. It's, I know you guys had to be thinking, oh my gosh, here he goes again. It's like Bill Murray's Groundhog Day, right? Huh? That's what it feels like for me when I go to work, by the way. Bill Murray's Groundhog Day. It's the same thing every day. But anyway, so uh, I'm, I got about a thousandth of run out an uh, inch away from the chuck on my... Uh, ground um, uh, drill rod so you know I'm, I'm pleased with that and for for what a uh, three jaw chuck is I'm, I'm pretty pleased like I said I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this apart anyway because I want to wash it and clean it I'm not gonna bore you with that so uh, I've been thinking what uh, about the say hi Mike <laughs> see hey there's one of them I told you I got boys you just aren't gonna ever see them uh, anyway, I think uh, my next project, and I don't know what you guys think about this, is um, I'm really enjoying the lathe. Um, I want to start on the uh, Burke Mill, uh, but, I, and, uh, but uh, I'm waiting for a unit to be installed in my building, and I still got some heating, I'm sorry, I still got some insulation and stuff to do out there. And uh, I would show it to you, but it's very much like one of those, uh, you know, those kid puzzle games where you have the little squares and they've got numbers on them and they're mixed up and you got to slide them around to, to get the numbers. Now that's my shop, right? So hopefully uh, after I get it insulated and everything, I can start organizing and take birth out there. But I think as far as the next uh, YouTube shop student um, project, I think I'm, I think I've... Uh, I cut my teeth enough making some uh, chips. Uh, oh, by the way, lesson learned. Uh, you know, that's just a very, very small cut, but it really bled uh, because I didn't break that edge. So it's a newbie mistake. Uh, mea culpa. Next time, <laughs> Joe's breaking the edges. Um, so anyway, I digress. So the next uh, project, I'm thinking uh, I need a steady rest. And, you know, I think a steady rest would be nice ha to have for the lathe. Now, I do cast aluminum, and I've cast a lot of aluminum over the years. Uh, I think uh, coupled with the T-slotted cross slide that I have um, uh, for this lathe and maybe a fly cutter, I could cut the bottom of it. You know, I can get enough packing under there to cut the bottom so that it uh, fits uh, between the ways. And uh, so I thought maybe I'd do that. Or um should i do something uh like maybe make a little simple steam engine you know like maybe a bar stock steam engine or something like that so um for the rest of you new guys out there uh where, where do you think i should go from here any suggestions now as always i'm open to constructive criticism so if you've seen me do something unsafe or something like that uh or an operation that i could have done better uh please let me know and uh because i i uh, appreciate that sort of stuff uh, on a side note, I did order a uh, number two Morse taper finish reamer and a number three Morse taper finish reamer. The two Morse taper reamer got here pretty quick. Um, I did uh, very gently run it into my tailstock, and I'll demonstrate that uh, when I get the other one with the headstock, just to take out any, uh, you know, shave out any just. Uh, uh, nicks, uh, small burrs and that stuff. I'm not trying to cut on the taper. I just want to clean it up. So uh, I did order those. Uh, the other one uh, is not here yet. It probably, I don't know how it's going to get here. You know, it's coming from China because I, you know, I, I couldn't afford the good American made ones. But anyway, I digress. So um, I'm going to call it uh, quits here for the night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing my videos and subscribing. I appreciate that. Uh, if these have been any help, please tell your friends. And other than that, have a blessed day.